Cloudcast Media presents, from the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina, this is the Cloudcast with Aaron Delp and Brian Gracely, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to episode 111 of the Cloudcast. We're coming to you live from Cloud Open and LinuxCon here in New Orleans, and this show is sponsored by Open at Citrix and the Linux Foundation. Huge thank you to them for making this possible. Um, this morning we are talking to James Shubin. James is a prolific blogger. What do, you, what do you think of that title? Oh, that's very flattering. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we're, we're really, honestly, we're here to talk a, a good bit about Puppet and, and a lot of things that, that James has been doing around Puppet and his experiences really kind of as a, as a user, getting started, what he's doing, and then how far he's taken it, which is actually pretty amazing. Um, yeah. Start to finish in your kind of your your journey in puppet. <laughs> well, it's very so kind go ahead, of James. Yeah, so introduce yourself. Um, you know, the cool thing about this show is we keep having people come around and tell us to have people come on the show. We had a ton of people who were like, "You need to talk to James. He's been doing really cool stuff." So tell us about the cool stuff you've been doing. Well, thank you. I think you guys are uh, some of my biggest cheerleaders so far. <laughs> um, I'm a system and DevOps kind of guy. Um, I do lots of Linux stuff and. Puppet and other things, and uh, at one point I was looking into uh, distributed file systems, okay. and uh, I kind of like to automate the uh, automate things to death, if you will. And so I decided to write a Puppet module for Gluster, which is uh, one of the main reasons I'm here at the conference. Okay. Uh, John Mark Walker, who uh, sort of head of the the Gluster community, yep. asked me to come and speak, and uh, now I'm here speaking with you guys too. Okay. So. Uh, Hanging out, having a good time. So, sysadmin, obviously a bunch of skills in how to script things, how to automate things. What, like, how long had you been using Puppet before you started writing this for for Gluster? Uh, I think it's been at least two or three years, probably. Okay. I mean, you sort of start off hearing about this Puppet thing, you hack on it a bit, and your code in retrospect is terrible. But, uh, you know, after a while... it works a little bit. Yeah, it works a little bit. You sort of have to get over that little getting used to Puppet and the sort of Puppet-specific uh, language things. Yep. Uh, and then at some point you start to sort of understand Puppet. And I think that's a big sort of step because before you, you get it, people can talk about it. But until you actually do it and, and really get why it, it can be an elegant thing, um, it's, not, it's not as exciting. But when you get it, then you can think, oh, there are a lot of possibilities. You've got to get past that first learning curve. Right. And that. right. So, you know, one of the things we find in... Unfortunately, we don't get enough practitioners on the show. And okay. That's kind of why we're excited about having you. Folks ask us all the time, like, we've heard what the vendors say. Tell us what it you know, means to do this in real life. Like, one of the things we find from a lot of people is, um, especially practitioners just talking to them, shooting the shit, having a beer with them, is um, they're good at what they do, but they're not always confident enough to go, like, I want to put it out in public. Sure. Right? So how did you get over that hump to say, like, I'm willing to put this back in the community? Right. So you have to just dive in. And it was a little bit of a step. Um, I started writing a blog. Okay. It's now called the Technical Blog of James, which is fairly Googleable okay. uh, on those we'll, terms. We'll put, the, we'll put the URL in the show notes. <laughs> sure. And, I mean, don't look at the earliest stuff. It gets bad. I haven't taken anything down, but... Uh, Everything's just... there for historical purposes. Exactly, yeah. It shows the journey. It's great, because <laughs> in 10 years, I'll look back and be very embarrassed. I'll be like, what was I thinking? Uh, but so yeah, I just I just wrote some posts and wanted to sort of I wanted to get feedback actually from other sysadmins because yeah. when I'm hacking on stuff, I don't know if it's shit. I mean, I think it's probably good or hopefully it's good. Yeah. And uh, if other people tell you that they like this or they don't like this, I can appreciate that. Okay. Um, I actually rather hear from more people that something is bad, so at least I can know what they don't like and what to fix. But uh, you just gotta just gotta push code. You just gotta write stuff and and, and see what you come up with. You know. Yeah. So what, what's what's your typical engagement with, say, the public community or even the Gluster community around the stuff you've been doing? I think um, this is my first Linux con. I think that uh, most of the people that I've met, I think, get out into the public a lot more often, go to conferences and things like that. Um, I'm excited to be here because, uh, you know, it's nice to speak and actually meet other users. Yeah. Um, I know some users. Uh, I'm from Montreal, so it's... I don't know if it's the biggest tech community compared to, to big cities like San Francisco and otherwise, but... Uh, we get by, yeah. and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll meet more people here, and hopefully they'll criticize my stuff, and hopefully I'll be able to ship better code because of it. Right. And, uh, and how did the talk go? I actually, my talk is tomorrow. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, 
So, uh, so at the it's Gloucester gonna go Community great. Day. Right. It's going to go great. It's going to go great. Yes. I'm going to be um, extremely... I think I'm breaking all the conference rules because I'm going to be doing a live demo. I'm going to be talking a bit and doing a live demo. Temp so. Tempting the demo gods. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it's worse because I'm tempting the demo gods with code running on my home cluster, which oh, is over, Montreal. Over the wireless internet. That's that right. It so, may, may or may not work. <laughs> right. Screen, brave man. screen is going to hopefully hold up and uh, hopefully the internet will too. Very cool. So... so. So storage is a storage is a funny beast, just in general. Indeed, right? yeah. Um, you know, the, the 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 goal of storage is save the data, present the data, don't corrupt the data. Right? Okay. Um, I mean, at a high level. Right. right? Um, talk about the challenge of kind of trying to automate systems that are like that, right? I mean, they're they're kind of they should be highly available, they should be stable. Like, talk about you know what where you went from, like you said, your your early crappy code to where you are now. What you learned yeah. from that comment you must be like a distributed storage guy because you, you're right on the money. Like, that is the challenge. stay at a Holiday Inn last night. Oh, <laughs> right. I mean, the, the trick is, and this is, maybe I can explain to why the Puppet Gluster module that I've written is actually a hard thing to write. I mean, it's not nearly as hard a thing to write as the Gluster itself. Um, so if you hack on that, like, you have more problems. But um, you have a situation where you'd like to have an ideal setup where you can configure each node sort of as a fair member and not have or not need to have one master node that says I'm the first node, you're the second node. And so if you can really have a, um, a symmetrical configuration and have it still deploy and not like split brain or do something yep. that, that wouldn't work, um, that's, that would be elegant. Um, and that's what I've tried to do. So um, if, you, if you try and solve that problem, it makes your code turning from being a very small problem to a very big problem. Yeah. Now, you could probably rewrite parts of Gluster to make it easier for the puppet guys, but that's, that's not really the plan. The plan is to... They've done a good job. I'll see if I can do as good a job to give system ins and DevOps people a good a good interface, which, is, which I like as Puppet. Very cool. So, do you use Puppet for the rest of your infrastructure? Are you using it for app deployment and server deployment, or...? Um, uh, mostly storage. I use a lot of things. Um, I actually uh, use Cobbler, at least to provision machines, uh, both Iron and uh, VMs. Uh -huh. um, they have a tool called Cone, which works ex especially well. Um, and I sort of, I really like to automate as much as I can, which you have to decide how much you want to automate as a system. Sure. So, you know, I have a Puppet module that will run Cone, for example, to deploy okay. machines, and then Puppet itself will take over and run the rest. Um, on the Gluster side, um, you mentioned big data and preserving the user data. So that's important. That's the Gluster's problem. Yep. My problem is configuration management. So I will do everything to make it 100% automatic, even if it's a bit dangerous. Okay. So if you want, uh, my module can actually um, partition the drives and build a file system and then install Gluster on top of that, which, if it doesn't work well, could be a bad issue because <laughs> sure. you've suddenly lost your data. But I'm, I'm confident to run it at least on my personal data, okay. and the code is all like open source, and you can, you can check it for yourself. And if you want to play it a bit more safe, you don't have to use that part. Right. It's like a, if you'd like to do this automation and also partition your stuff, yep. it's free. You can use it. From a learning puppet standpoint... Sure. What, what do you think was probably, like, the biggest hurdle you had to... Um, or the best resource that you grabbed? You just need, a, like, a VM or a few VMs or something. You can even run it off your laptop. Obviously, Linux sort of thing makes it easier. Yep. Um, and, uh, and just try things. So I wrote, you know, started writing code, started realizing what was wrong with that code, fixing it. Um, at the same time, walking through, like a whole bunch of different versions of Puppet. So from the 0.25s, I think it was, or 4s, up to newer versions of Puppet. So some things changed and some new features got added. Um, just fun hacks, too. So I was like, can Puppet do recursion? Which sort of isn't a normal thing that you would think to do with Puppet, but it turns out you can. And uh, I wrote a, just a stupid article about that. In practice, probably not very useful, but... You just have to push the boundaries right. and then find a problem that's hard to solve. And then when you get to hard enough problems, you'll see what the limitations are and what needs to improve in Puppet to continue. And, and you'll, be, you'll be better at building things, right? Now are you, now are you, so you, you write some stuff, 
you put it out in the blog, and you get some feedback. Are you getting more feedback from kind of the, the proper puppet community, or are you getting it from other sysadmins, or what, what uh, do you find in you know, feedback? Where does it come from? I, I get a bit. Um, it's always exciting when every once in a while someone will comment, but they'll have a comment that's right on, which yep. means, uh, lets me see that they really understand the issue, and that's cool. Um, I wish I had more feedback. Yep. Um, I've sometimes run into people, like at a conference or mm -hmm. here, and they'll be like, hey, and have, give me a comment that I didn't even know about, because I think people are kind of shy to, to speak out, and yeah. they're worried, you know, maybe I'm not as good about good at this stuff right. as, as James, yeah. or just silly, but yeah. you just gotta, just ask me. Do you, do you get a lot of folks who go, hey, um, I'm not running Gluster, but I'm running this other thing, can you help me write a mod, can you help a lot of folks ask you to get them started, or um, write it for them, or... I haven't had that. I've had a few people ask me to sort of write puppet code, okay. not for a specific project per se. Mm -hmm. um, I've written, I've started to write um, some puppet modules for different communities that whose products I use, but okay. who don't have a puppet module that I like or at all. So I've written um, a puppet IPA module for free IPA, okay. um, and Gluster is obviously a big, a big project too. Is a uh, there's a cool Gluster community, and yep. you know, if you have hundreds of servers that you want to deploy, it could sure. save you some time. So, what's next for the Gluster Puppet stuff? Is it like, do you feel like it's complete? You have more features coming? Uh, Where are the, you at in the development of that? The truth is, there are a lot of things that I would love to add given the time. Mm -hmm. um, I just work on it for free, so I don't have sure. unlimited hours to put to it. Um, I think it would be great if a lot of people really. I mean, hope, excuse the expression, but like tested the hell out of it. Mm -hmm. um, it works really well for me. Um, it does automatic firewalling and adds all sorts of other sort of things that I find useful. Uh, at the moment, I've been talking with John Mark Walker. He's sort of interested in using it specifically for people who haven't ever used Gluster before. Mm -hmm. So the idea is they would just provision some machines, maybe we'll even supply some scripts for that, and then just run it mm -hmm. and sit back and then poof, you have Gluster. Exactly, right. Yep. And then you'll have it, it'll be hopefully working, um, they can break it if they want to try some you know, cool thing or take down bricks and, and see how it performs Sure. without having to, to do all the configuration, which is actually fairly easy, uh, but some people like one one sort of, I, I don't say click, but one, one click solution, you know? Right. Very cool. Very cool. Well, listen... Um, First off, thanks for coming on. And, you know, I, it's like we said. Sometimes we get we, we run some very very smart folks who are kind of like ah, I don't want to I don't want to be filmed. I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to do so. First and foremost, thanks for coming. Um, second, uh, folks, go take a look at the blog. We'll get the blog in the blog notes. Um, if he's putting in the time, you know, it's the thing we always recommend to people: get involved. Uh, Put yourself out there. We have a lot of people that, you know, after we've had Nigel and the other puppet guys are like, how do I get started? James is a perfect example. Just get started. You don't have to be a rock star doing it day one. You know, you'll learn from other people, get in the community. That's the big thing that we find from, from this week. Um, so thank you very much for coming on. Uh, once again, if folks want to go, you know, ping me on Twitter, find your blog, what's the best way to, to come and track you down? Um, I do have Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is Purple Idea. Okay. Sort of an old handle that I got years ago, and I can't change it now. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, that's that's one way you can check that out. My blog uh, posts links to Twitter. Um, you can go to ttboj.wordpress.com. Um, the technical blog of James. The technical blog of James. Very creative. But I wanted to be explicit that you know some people are more political or otherwise. I just wanted to do technical posts. Yeah, cool. And you know, come have a look and tell me what you think. And, very nice. And, and happy hacking. Good. Awesome. Very nice. Cool. All right, so before we go, we need to once again thank our sponsors, Open at Citrix, open.citrix.com, and the Linux Foundation, linuxfoundation.org. Uh, thanks again to them for everything they, they're doing to make this possible. And if you like the show, please tell a friend and leave us a review on iTunes. You can follow us on Twitter at thecloudcastnet or on the web at thecloudcast.net where you can find links to everything Cloudcast. Thanks for listening.